guys, I'm Trivi and this is Teddy and we are the Russells! Today we're going to tell you guys about our teen pregnancy story. Okay, so this all started when I was 16 years old. I used to get really, really sick and have irregular periods. And at the time we were having unprotected sex. So um, it was a little bit scary for me because I really didn't know if I was pregnant or not. So I was always like telling him, oh my God, I'm pregnant every month that my period was like a day or two. So um, I used to have, and I used to actually have like some pregnancy symptoms, like the sore boobs, like the headaches and everything like that. So one month, um, I was telling him that I didn't feel good and that I was sick. And he told me, he was like, well, it wouldn't be that bad if you had a baby. And I'm sitting on the phone like, I'm 16, I ain't been to school. Oh, that's a good job. <laughs> but at the same time, it was kind of like, oh. Oh, yes, I had a ring for him. He was my fiance at 16 years old. <laughs> um, but I had, but in my, in my mind, I was like, oh my God, he wants to marry me and have kids with me. And it was like this little fantasy dream that every girl wants. And so I was like, okay. So then we started trying. Um, we started trying for seven months. Throughout those seven months, I got even sicker. I had ovary and cysts. Um, I had really, really bad urinary tract infections. I was back and forth to the doctor um, over those, and the antibiotics wasn't really working for me, and they would give me other infections. So it was really, really bad. Um, fast forward to when I finally did get pregnant. So I it was coming up on my period, and I started spotting. And I was like, okay, my period's not due for another couple of weeks. I don't understand why I'm spotting. So um, I looked it up on Google and it said that I was implantation, well that it was implantation bleeding. So I was like, oh my God, I need to go get a test. So I went to go get a test and um, it came out positive, very faint, because I think it was really, really early. It came out very faint and I immediately called him and was like. And the first thing I said was, why would you go to Dollar Tree and get a pregnancy test because <laughs> that's not right, it's cheap. So. We ended up, you know what I'm saying, getting a couple and they kept saying the same thing. I'm like, man, what is it the same thing? So, we ended up going to the doctor, and the doctor had the same test that we was taking. Yeah. And I looked at the doctor like, you know what, get the dog treat test out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he was like, oh, these are actually the most accurate ones. And I'm like, man, well, she's ready now. So, you know, we had to figure it out from there, so. Yeah, and they didn't um, they didn't do a blood test on me. Um, when I tested positive, I set up a doctor's appointment for me, and um, he didn't go. I don't think I told you about that doctor's appointment. Um, I was really, really scared, and um, they did a um, vaginal ultrasound to see, and I was six weeks pregnant. So fast forwarding a little bit on into... Um, into the pregnancy part. What I left to do was tell my parents. Dun, 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 dun. Um, actually, my mom was very understanding. Um, she only knew because I was I got really really sick. I dropped like ten pounds in the beginning of my pregnancy. Um, I couldn't hold anything down. It was absolutely terrible. Madison gave me the worst morning sickness. So um, my mom kind of just asked me. She was just like she looked at me with her like. And I'm like, no. She said, don't lie to me. Are you pregnant? And I said, yeah, but I, I didn't know. I, was, I, I don't know what to do, mom. And she was like, at the time she was taking prenatals to help her hair and nails grow. She told me, she said, you know what? Go there and get the prenatals out the door. Have you made a doctor's appointment? I said, yes, I made a doctor's appointment. Have you back? <laughs> And um, I was six weeks pregnant. So she asked, um, did Teddy's parents know? And actually that's how his parents found out. But they didn't find out when my mom found out. I was six weeks pregnant when my mom found out. My mom didn't call his parents, his mom, to tell her that I was pregnant until I was five months pregnant. Yeah, no, because I was trying to, you know, you know how you gotta tell it your own head because my parents different than hers. It was a little bit easy, you know what I'm saying? So, 
I forgot how it was one day. My mom, I forgot, I think she We're had not me. We was doing something. And she had on uh, and she said, she said, tell you. I said, hmm? She said, yeah, something you got to tell me. Then, you know, when, you, when they parents ask you that, <laughs> you know, you, you done did something, you in trouble with something. And that first thing I'm thinking is, trip, pray, trip, pray, trip, pray. So, you know me, I said, no, <laughs> no, no. And she was like, well, Jimmy, mama had come in and said that Jimmy ain't pregnant. And then my mind was like, and my heart was being like, yeah. And I was just like, I was like, yeah, she pregnant. And then she was like, Not to be all cussing, <laughs> but she'll like cuss you out and different like in cuss words that don't go together. It'll be in, you know, not even order. You know what I'm saying? So she'll say, eh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it'll, it'll be something like that. But yeah, after she found out, she was she was mad for a while, but then she started to be supportive and stuff like that. She was. And then after that, I ain't tell my, I ain't tell my dad for a even longer time. I mean, shoot, I was going. I wasn't even going to tell him until Chubby had even had dropped the baby. And my dad found out I was having to move one day. We was doing some stuff in the storage. And um, you know how he just got that father son, like, one on one, y'all alone together and stuff. <laughs> and he was like, I tell that son, 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 you got that girl pregnant. I said, same thing. <laughs> hmm? You know, what are you talking about? He said, Teddy. Your mama would have called me and told me, God <laughs> damn, man. I said, yeah, well, I can't get it right. So, so uh, he said, yeah, you know, you go to work and blah, 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 blah. This and that, blah, blah. So I was like, yeah, I know. Uh-huh. So he was a little bit easier, but I didn't want to know. I feel like he was a little, he felt a little upset because you lied 50 million times before you actually told him the truth. But his dad was easy going. My dad was more concerned. He was, um, my dad, so I was, I have a stepdad. Um, I call him my dad because he's been around since I was six years old. Um, I am, he illegally adopted me. So, um, that is like another subject anyway. But yeah, um, so my stepdad, the absolute late amazing man, he came to me and he was more, like he was disappointed. He told me that he was disappointed. But he was more concerned about like how I was feeling emotionally and um, making sure that I'm eating um, both of our dads actually because his dad would bring me food would like bring me food. They ain't bring me no stuff. food. Look, come to the house, <laughs> Chibin, I got you a, a cut door, double quarter pound with bacon, egg, and cheese. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and I'm in the house like, yeah, 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 yeah. With my hand, I look in the bag. Ain't nothing else in the bag. I'm like, daddy, yeah, come on, daddy. <laughs> And he like, boy, you ain't getting in the heat, I'm like, man, come on, man. He's so always telling me. He's going right with that. Yeah, he's going right with that. Even though I was pregnant, too. I don't need some food, too. I'm tired, too. Yeah, he's always telling me. He's always telling me. Yeah, he's always telling me. Both of our dads were really supportive on that part. Um, mom, Our moms together, like, because they, they talked a little bit throughout my pregnancy. Um, but they, my mom is more laid back. She really um, restricts her, not feelings, because she'll tell me like, that like, she loves me and that she's concerned. But she's really, really laid back. She's gonna let you, I was, she, she's gonna let me experience things without being over on my back. Okay, so fast forward on, later on into my pregnancy, we had, we had to go to a whole bunch of doctor appointments because I think when you're a certain age, they automatically put you in a high risk range. Um, for pregnancies, so my first couple of months, I was I went to the doctor every week or every two weeks um, to get checked or ultrasounds. So we went to my four month checkup, and I found out that I was two centimeters dilated. We were fine, you know. They said that happens sometimes. They sent me on my way. I lost my mucus plug at a wedding. <laughs> Embarrassing. People notice that is such a story time because it's actually quite funny. But I left, um, <laughs> I lost, I lost my music, music plug at a wedding. 
So they wanted me to come back in and see me again. At about this time, I was like 25 weeks. Um, and they told me I was five centimeters dilated. So they immediately um, bumped me into the hospital. They wanted me to stay. They gave me beta methazone. I believe that's what it's called. I'm probably not pronouncing it right. But they gave me beta methazone. Beta methadone um, to stabilize the lungs for the baby because they didn't know if they know if she was coming early or not. Don't let them tell you that those shots don't hurt. They and, don't hurt and like, look, you know, besides besides all that, the most important is like again, make sure you got some insurance. Like your mom ain't got it, you I mean you too young to buy, get it. You know what I'm saying? You know, me, you want to do something, man. And I ain't really have a good job like I was supposed to, you know. So every week it was hundred. Like I said again, it was hundred dollars, hundred dollars, hundred dollars, because it was, it was just crazy, man. Like I said, them people kidding in that. You could have yeah. buy a brand new Mustang, mess with them people. How many payments you gotta mess with yeah. in there, man? So again, I repeat, this was probably one of the best advice ever. Make sure your mama and your dad or his mama and his daddy for some insurance. On you and the baby. You and, yeah. You and the baby. Um, so I was admitted for beta methadone and um, the shot hurts like hell. It feels like you're burning from the inside. Um, but I had to say, you get your first shot when you get in there and then 24 hours later you get your second shot. So I went through that. Um, thank God. My, uh, Madison actually stayed in till 38 weeks. She was a six pounder. Amazing. I have some advice for you guys. So um, I feel like the most asked question for the both of us is. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. I think he's saying that so much because. Y'all gonna see. You gonna see. Yeah. Y'all gonna see. We definitely um, had to deal with insurance problems. Like they they cut off my insurance right in the middle of my pregnancy. So then I, I went from paying, getting free doctor's appointments to every time I went in for a doctor's appointment, and I was high risk. So I was going in there almost every week or every two weeks. Can't buy no shoes, none. Can't. I was, had to between sixty and hundred dollars um, for each for every appointment. So if I had to, if they had to rush me and admit me in there, I was paying out my pocket. So. Can't eat right. Yes. <laughs> um, but. Our advice for you guys, because the most known question for us is that we always get asked, is how do we handle being young parents? And we handle it day by day. Um, when I first had Madison, those first couple of days was really, really, really hard. It's, um, because I was living at my mom's house, he was living at his mom's house. So we have we were battling between you know seeing the baby and our family weren't put together how we wanted it to, and then I was still working. I went, I think I only stayed home with Madison for maybe two to three weeks or so, and I was right back at work. So I would have to, she would cry in the middle of the night. There was one night I remember so vividly because my mom is stern on my mom was very stern on me and making sure that I take care of my child. And you might have parents just like this, but Madison was crying the entire night. She pooped up her back. I stuffed my hands in poop on an accident, trying to change her. Um, and I was calling my mom, and I was just like, I'm so tired. I can't do it. And I was crying. And she goes, I will take her for an hour. I will get her a bath, and I will bring her back to you. That hour will pass so fast. <laughs> I felt like I didn't even go to sleep, but my mom was she was very strict on making sure that I know and she knew that we did it on purpose too so she was making sure that I knew that you run the child of the world you're going to take care of it so I say take it day by day you I mean you have to prepare yourself mentally for the nights that you can't sleep for the days that you can't sleep for the crying days for the poop explosions for the boots in the bathtub that you have to swap out with your gloves. It, um, they, it's so many things that they don't tell you for, from the boob aches when they're getting engorged to them peeling off, feeling raw, um, to the exploding the boobs in your bra. Uh, there's so many things. I would say just prepare yourself mentally um, for the whole experience. You really have to be positive. And make sure your soulmate is there to support you and 
Because it's going to be hard with a young parent. You're already going to feel alone. So, you know, whoever you with, make sure they... And if you guys aren't together, at least the most thing I see in young people. At least have some insurance, if y'all Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you and this insurance. Um, I say like um I see this most in young um in teenage parents where the mother will lash out at the father because of the way that he acts. Regardless of who your child's father is, first off, you can't change a man. You cannot change the way they act. You can only change the way you react to them. You have to be um, mature enough in your mind to <clears throat> co-parent with that man. You can't go out and say that your child father is a dog and he's trash and he's this and that. Regardless of whatever he may be, he gave you the most beautiful gift that life could ever hand you. So he is still your child's father. You still have to co-parent. You can't take your child away from that man because you don't want to do that. Y'all have to find guidance and um, mutual respect for each other. And, I mean, that's not advice. What's yours? Don't say insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say insurance. Yeah, all I say is just make sure to the guys' part, just make sure you're there with to help her. And, you know, any way you can, you're young, so you can't do much. But this, if you, if you can't be there... You know, financially, just be there, you know, physically and mentally for, you know what I'm saying? Because it's rough, man. It's rough. And remember, if y'all ain't got nothing else, y'all got each other. So that's all I can really say for real, for real. at the end of the day, you know, your parents are going to be there 24 7 with you all the time. And, you know, help you. You just got to learn with each other as you go. And that's why, for real, it's not as bad as being a, you know, a business. You learn a lot of stuff, and it really forces you to not really grow up, but make better decisions, you know, that can affect your life in the long run. So that's all I really got to say. And don't forget that your house was a strong whatever life goes at you, um, you can make it beyond that point. And there is no rock that you can't go So. Always be blessed, put God first, 